Hello my soccer universe, let's finish up in Western Europe where quite some things were happening. I have, have to say probably of the weekend the biggest results happened in Spain and especially in France. So we have quite a few things to talk. I am wearing Real Madrid because headline number one, Real Madrid win the Derby Madrileño and probably just about claw themselves back into a title race with Atleti. And I think the guys from Barcelona were also not unhappy that uh, Real Madrid for once won, but no one would say this out loud, of course. Um, Real Sociedad though takes the lead in the table, but only <laughs> barely. <laughs> uh, in, in a way in Barcelona, Messi gets um, finally a goal from open play again uh, to give Barcelona a win. So we'll also talk. And then we have in Ligue 1, Lyon topples PSG. Uh, helps Lille go top of the table, although as we will see actually it's Marseille who are the sleeper team there and Neymar is out with an injury. Let's see how long it will last. Let's hop right into it. I saw of this week the um, uh, Real Madrid Atleti game uh, in full. Uh, of the other games I saw highlights that I'm talking about. One of those highlights was Valencia Athletic uh, Bilbao. Uh, as I said, this was kind of, it's a big name matchup and uh, both coaches rather on the hot seat in a way. So a uh, win for both would have been important, but it only ends with a draw. Um, in the first of I thought Valencia had the better of the game, took the lead through a penalty. Uh, Athletic Bilbao, and I have to say, um, on one side, I was happy to see Athletic Bilbao play in the first team colors, but it was a little bit of a hard watch as well. Because uh, the white jerseys of Valencia and the striped jerseys of Bilbao that didn't mesh well look better in the Derby Madrileño, I have to say. Uh, Via Libre um, gives then uh, Bilbao the equalizer, and then penalty Garcia in the 79th seemingly sent uh, Bilbao on the win. No, but it's Vallejo in the 83rd that uh, uh, gets the equalizer again after Soler uh, assist. Um, Sevilla leave it late uh, and it was an own goal, but uh, Sevilla was the better team there um, in Getafe. But uh, yeah, own goal it was very, rather un unlucky. And Sevilla get another important win. Uh, maybe they can get back in, in, in into something. I remember in October we were talking after they had the draw in Barcelona where they were the better team. Uh, can Sevilla really mount the challenge and then they kind of fizzled out. Maybe they can get something back, but uh, we have had to see on their day. Sevilla can be amazing, but not always is their day. It was not a day of Atletico Madrid. It was a day of Real Madrid. Um, I have to say this was, I did not expect what, 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 what I saw. It was not necessarily the case of Simeone um, hanging deep and letting Real Madrid come. No, he actually wanted, wanted to act, but it was... Uh, Zidane, who set up Real Madrid perfectly by pushing um, uh, Carrasco and uh, Trippier all the way back. And so it seems like they have a back line of five because those two never could, could attack. And you isolated Joao Felix from, um, uh, and uh, Suarez from the rest of, of the team, which they need a little bit of supply. But the midfield was definitely bossed. And uh, another thing is the Casemiro, when he is playing he can by him himself control a lot of the central midfield and he usually has a lot of space because Real Madrid is really pushing uh, forward quite quite high especially with Modric and Kroos on opposite sides and that really had an effect on uh, Atleti who seemingly didn't get the game plan quite right and it was really hard for um, Atleti to, 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 to adjust to the pressure and yes if you have Casemiro uh, you have Kroos and you have uh, Modric that's a pretty darn good midfield and it was Kroos to Cas Cas Casemiro who get um, who makes the 1-0 I think it was after after as a corner but at that point Bonsema already had pretty good chances as well in this Real Madrid was a clearly better team and probably should have led le 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 more than the one goal. I mean, I, I, I was always hoping for Atleti to come in because I'm actually buying a little bit Atleti stock this season. 
second half, many, many changes uh, of, of um, Simeone, who kind of realized, yeah, I got the whole whole approach wrong. So he takes off Herrera and Felipe brings on Lemar and uh, Lodi and also Carrasco comes on, Correa comes uh, uh, Korea calm, calm, comes on. The game is a whole lot more even. But then uh, another kind of telling uh, sign, he takes Joao Felicio and he was not happy with that. Let's put it that way. I mean, he was really fuming there and there was a poor guy trying to keep, keep giving the mask and Joao Felicio just <laughs> thought it's a little lanky. Ago. But um, Saul came on and I have to say uh, uh, Atletico could control the game better then. However, um, uh, who, who was the uh, Carvajal takes in a shot from outside the box and I thought this was a perfect shot to go in. But when you see the replay, it came off the bar onto the back of Oblak and into the, the net and that settled the game. And everything thereafter, um, Simeone tried to limit the damage. And I found this rather interesting. Yes, there were a few chances. And, you know, at a, at a better day for Atleti, they would have gotten at least one goal. And maybe that could have changed the game. Maybe they could have pushed for the equalizer. But to be honest, Real Madrid really, really outclassed them. That was a statement win by Real Madrid, who finished the, uh, the week of doom with three wins. Uh, against Sevilla, against Gladbach, and now against Atleti. And they looked like the best team in Spain. It has, has to say, so don't count Real Madrid out. We see it in the table. It's still not uh, looking perfect, but it looks pretty good. Real Sociedad only manages a 1-1 draw against Eibar. Um, Beren Muguruza, let's say. <laughs> Muguruza gives, gives, gives me a lead, but Eibar in 65th gets the equalizer and a uh, goal by Real Sociedad by Surprise who Belgia was disallowed for offside. Um, we had uh, uh, Villarreal getting also only a 1-1 against Betis, uh, Granada beating Elche and then Barcelona against Levante. Um, looking a lot like a uh, Barca Juve matchup, uh, Levante having more Juve jerseys than Juve at the moment, um, was a rather open game that um, then more and more took a turn towards Barcelona the more uh, the game went on um, with Barcelona shooting like crazy. I mean, there was one chance where a messy free kick finds the head of uh, Griezmann. Wonderfully done. Great save by the goal. goal where the ball falls to Longley. And the way he pushes this over the bar where it was almost easy to put it into the net. You should make this chance. Um, and so it seemed a little bit like what the Inter was doing, uh, having chance after chance after chance, but not getting through. And again, uh, I think he had um, uh, uh, Breathweight out on the wing, which what? I mean, the whole formation up front is not right. And especially I have all of this feeling Messi doesn't have enough Space. There's, he, the, the, uh, I mean, there was, there was one chance by Messi where Griezmann is running in front of him, try, trying to get, get away from him, but Messi takes a shot right where he goes, gets it around Griezmann, but not in on, on the goal. In the end, it's Franke de Jong who assists Messi, who takes a shot, goes in. They had some son of Skelet, but Barcelona get a win. How, how they often do it, Barcelona is still good enough to beat uh, not so good teams in La Liga consistently and this is why we all, all, all see that Barcelona will always be able to bounce a little bit back but it's the big games where you have to have some worries about Barca. Um, and uh, yesterday in the evening it was actually the only Monday game in the big uh, leagues uh, Celta Vigo pre uh, beat Cadiz and I learned not Cadiz not Cadiz as I would like to say. Um, obviously I did not expect it. It was 4-0 at, at the half. Nolito, Aspas with a penalty, then Beltrano, Mendes. Uh, uh, just before, for the half, proper destruction of, of uh, Cardiff, who uh, this is mainly the first down. I mean, they beat Bar uh, Madrid and Barcelona, but here against Vigo, they lose big. And this was a huge result for Vigo because, as we see, and we look at the other side, uh, they go way up, suddenly find themselves into ninth spot tells you also how tight it is down there and La Liga is still very, very, very tight. The disbalance measure is only 0.2, which means a very, very even league at the moment. Um, we have on top of Real Sociedad now on level with points, but thanks to goal difference uh, of more goals scored than Atleti being up top. Atleti having only conceded two goals so far, concede two against Real Madrid and then they have never trailed. 
So we have to see what it means. Uh, Real Madrid three points behind by the game more. So it definitely in Barcelona only in eighth, although rising. It definitely calls for an adjusted table, as you see. There are many, many games that are a little bit out of whack there. So if we adjust uh, the table, we actually get that um, Atletico is in first, still with a sizable lead over Real Madrid and the Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad just a little bit ahead of Real Madrid there. Uh, Barcelona moves up to six and with Sevilla uh, getting also ahead of Villarreal. Thanks to having a few games less, um, we also see uh, Celta Vigo not making as much of a rise. If we look towards uh, the Champions League spots, the top three that we have up there Still there, the top three, Atletico still with a decent chance of winning this championship thanks to the advantage of Real Madrid now leapfrogging um, Barcelona just by a hair, but getting themselves seriously in, in, into contention. Uh, just two weeks ago they were at 7%, now they have tripled their chances with three wins in a row. On the bottom, uh, yeah, Valladolid, Huesca and Elche. Although Elche is still riding high, but two games in hand, which they probably will not win. The scheduling during the week, they take two games from round 19. So that's uh, the last round of the first series, um, because those two, because we have to save the date for the Super Cup tournament, which probably will not be played in South, South Saudi Arabia at least. So yeah, uh, two big matchups actually, uh, Real Madrid against Athletic Club and Barcelona against Real Sociedad. Uh, two big matchups by name, Bilbao and Barcelona are not that great at the moment. Let's see what Real Sociedad is made of. The other teams of that round, I mean, this is going to play in late Jan January, so I'm not going to uh, have not even been put dates. On the weekend, we, Barcelona gets another big uh, game against Valencia, which is never an easy game for them. Um, Atletico uh, plays at home to Elche, maybe that's a good way to bounce back. And Real Madrid has to go to A-Bar, which might be another way for Real Madrid to uh, drop some points. Uh, other than that, uh, let's see, we are in Osasuna. Nah, I think those are the matchups uh, to look out for. Levante Real Sociedad, I don't know why I'm looking at that, but um, maybe. In France, we had first Marseille and I'm telling you, uh, beating Mono Monaco, they, uh, in the first 50 minutes, Tovin ben, and Ben Benedetto assist each other for uh, the goals and Marseille is cruising. I found a little bit odd that Monaco was playing in the um, uh, navy uh, yellow away jersey, but I, they look good and I think it made some sense. It's just I expect Mon Monaco in, uh, in red and white. Uh, it took a while for uh, Monaco to get back into the game. They actually then controlled most of the, of the game, but only could get a penalty goal. And Marseille hangs on for another win. Um, Montpellier 3-2 at last is uh, a result that uh, we have to mention for the top games. Rennes wins a, uh, finally a game again, uh, stop their drop um, against Nice, where I think Patrick Vieira was fired. And then, yeah, Lille against Bordeaux. Lille... Definitely the bad, bad, bad team, take the lead through Bamba. Uh, Basic then can equalize for Bordeaux and just before the half, uh, Joseph Font after Bamba corner makes it 2-1 for Lille, who then were always a little bit more threatening to score the third goal than, Bar uh, than Bordeaux. Barcelona. Bordeaux was uh, to the equalizer. And in the evening, the big PSG against Lyon matchup it was mostly Lyon. I mean, I was focusing more on the Milan game, but whenever I, I looked out, it was definitely that Lyon uh, was threatening. Yes, there were a few chances for PSG, uh, namely an attempted direct corner kick by Neymar, which says everything. I mean, uh, well, a shot, by, I think, by Florenzi with, with, with the one um, way where the, actually the front was a little bit combining well, but Lyon seemed to be way more cohesive. And then um, uh, a build-up error by uh, PSG that is um, def uh, is intercepted by Toko Ekambi who plays to Cadavere and the 35th minute is 1-0 Lyon and to be honest, yes there were chances, I think Mbappé had a good one in, in, in the end but it was mostly Lyon that were threatening to get uh, the win and then the big scene towards the end of the game uh, when uh, Thiago Mendes brings down Neymar who honestly Neymar should have tried to pass the ball soon and not dribble, dribble and try to do it all by himself. He doesn't do that. He's brought down uh, from the back and cle clearly left the uh, 
the field injured. I don't buy all the crying of Neymar, to be honest, but it was bad enough that the VAR got involved and gave him a red. I think it it was a regular. It, it was not that bad of, of a tackle. Neymar seemingly has. It's not a breakage. It's not a ligament damage, but he will be out for about three to four weeks. So PSG fans not happy about that. As I said in the table now, we have Lille and Lyon leapfrogging PSG. Uh, if you look at Marseille, is has two games less and looks ac actually quite good. So again, it calls for an adjusted table. And if we adjust, Marseille is suddenly find themselves on top ahead of Lille, Lyon and PSG. So rather surprising, I have to say, Montpellier is uh, staying in there as well. Uh, it's still PSG ahead of Lyon and Lille for the, champ uh, for the championship uh, and similar for the Champions League places. Um, will be interesting who comes out there. Uh, next round. Uh, here uh, we have a midweek round which is nicely played all of Wednesday in the 7 and 9 o'clock uh, slots. We have um, Lyon play against Brest, we have Lille against Dijon, we have PSG against Lorient and we have Rennes against uh, Marseille. So I think Rennes Marseille is the big one there. A uh, big name matchup would be Bordeaux against Saint uh, Etienne, but both teams are nowhere. And then at the uh, on the weekend we have another big matchup for PSG, Lille against PSG late on. Um, Marseille plays against Reims, Lyon against Nice, so we, we have a proper title race there, I have to say. No games have been played in Porto, Portugal. We still have uh, Sporting head of Benfica and Porto, as we did last week. Uh, this weekend, again, all the three big ones there uh, have rather easy matches. Sporting against Farense, um, Benfica plays at Gil Vicente and, Port and Porto at home to Nacional. So Prague against Rio Ave maybe is the closest matchup there. So yeah. That's it from Western Europe. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Drop a line below what you thought about the games and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.